Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Kaplan. I gave a talk just this weekend to the Cannabis Public School, and I'm here giving that talk again so that everybody else can catch on for what they missed. Hope you enjoy. All right, so this was me last Sunday, 9 a.m. in the morning, and this is Cannabis and Tolerance. So welcome, and thank you for being here. Today, we're gonna talk about Cannabis Tolerance. Not just how it works, but what it tells us about ourselves, about medicine, and about how we learn to care better. This is not just science, but it's also about shifting narratives because cannabis has something to teach even the most seasoned clinicians too. Here's our roadmap. We'll start with some basic definitions, what tolerance is, what it isn't, and then we'll move into what shapes it, the fascinating biology underneath it, and the evolutionary reasons it exists at all. We'll close with practical strategies, and I hope a new respect for the cannabis community's role in teaching medicine what personalization really looks like. I am Ben Kaplan. I'm a board certified family doctor, author, and chief medical officer at several organizations focused on cannabis care. I've overseen north of 300,000 patients with medical cannabis, curated one of the largest open access cannabis research libraries around, and I taught some interested students at Harvard Business School and beyond. But none of that matters as much as this. Cannabis patients have made me a better doctor, and I'm here to pass on what helped me learn. So this doesn't quite work as well with no audience, but I can tell you that the show of hands for the folks who were there was pretty impressive. Lots of people have noticed that cannabis isn't working the way it used to, or they've heard that people need larger doses over time and people really just experience frustration and or panic instead of knowing what they're doing, which is indicative really of the whole industry. That's a lot of the blind leading the blind and people figuring it out by roulette. So the three very different beasts. Tolerance means you need more to get the same effect. The classic battery running low stuff. Dependence means your body gets used to it and complains when it's gone, like caffeine. Addiction is when you need to keep using despite some kind of harm, like texting your ex after edibles. Let's not confuse them. Tolerance is biological. Addiction is behavioral, and dependence is common in all kinds of meds, even the ones your doctor never warns you about. Think of your CB1 receptor like your brain's phone line. The first time you call, beautiful connection. THC gets through, and magic happens. But if you keep calling and calling, your brain starts screaming. GRKs tag the receptor like spam, Beta arrestins send you straight to voicemail, and eventually the phone gets unplugged. That's what tolerance looks like, your brain's version of we're done here for today. The good news, it doesn't block your number forever, it just needs a break. THC and CBD enter the brain in very different ways. THC, it walks right up to CB1 and starts the party. CBD, it floats around the edges, calming the music, fixing the lighting, and lowering the volume. Because CBD activates CB1 directly, it creates tolerance quickly. But CBD, it doesn't hammer any one particular receptor. It modulates broadly and gently, which is why most people don't build tolerance to CBD at all. If anything, it becomes more useful over time. Tolerance isn't a one-size-fits-all. It's shaped by your biology, your dosing, the time of day, your hormones, especially estrogen, and we'll get there in a minute. But estrogen actually shifts CB1 receptor density over a menstrual cycle. It's shaped by whether you're using full-spectrum medicine or isolates, by whether you're inhaling or swallowing. So if someone says, just take a break, without understanding your full picture, they're skipping the most important variable, you. 
When you take an isolate, say pure THC, it's a solo act. It hits CB1 hard, fast, and repeatedly. That's great for effect, but also for building tolerance. With full spectrum products though, THC has company, CBD, CBG, maybe THCV, terpenes. All of these modulate, buffer, and diversify the response. Think of it like taking a wild soloist and giving them a jazz ensemble. The music still plays, but your brain doesn't burn out quite as fast. So another audience question basically found that everybody's noticed a difference between isolates and full spectrum products. I've heard from a couple of people who use Epidiolex, which is a CBD variable that's essentially an isolate that they don't get tolerant of it. But again, that's CBD and we're going to cover that here. All right. Not all consumption methods are created equal when it comes to tolerance. Smoking and vaping give you a fast spike in THC, which means a fast pathway to tolerance. Edibles last longer and hit harder thanks to 11-hydroxy-THC. Tinctures vary by formulation, and topicals rarely lead to tolerance systemically at all. Same molecule, different ride, different consequences for your receptors. And this one, the way we consume and the choices we make for products goes directly to affect the buildup of tolerance. Fairly cut and dry for most people. Estrogen modulates CB1 receptor density, particularly in the hippocampus and limbic system of the brain. That means women may experience cyclical tolerance, higher sensitivity to THC around ovulation, lower effects just before menstruation. Most doctors aren't taught this. Most researchers haven't studied it, but patients have felt it for decades. If your cannabis response changes throughout the month, it's not in your head, it's in your hormones. Real talk, many people have had this moment. I hear about it all the time. You take your go-to edible, wait an hour, and then zip. Same dose, same product, totally different experience. Is it tolerance? Is it hormones? Empty stomach, planetary alignment. Welcome to the endocannabinoid system. It's complex, it's dynamic, and it's way smarter than we give it credit for. Not too much science here, but let's break down what actually happens when tolerance forms. First, THC binds to your CB1 receptor. If this happens too often, your cell recruits a protein called a GRK. It tags the receptor. Then beta arrestin shows up, it blocks the signal, and then helps pull the receptor literally inside the cell. So now your usual THC dose is calling, and the receptor isn't even on the surface anymore. That's receptor involution. It's not just desensitization, it's a literal cellular retreat. Here's the metaphor. THC is the guy who won't leave the party. CB1 opens the door at first, but then GRKs, the bouncers, step in and tag him. Beta arrestin drags him off and locks the door. These proteins aren't evil, they're smart, they're protecting the system from overstimulation. This happens with opiates, serotonin, dopamine. Cannabis is just more visible because we notice the effect right away. We call this desensitization, but it's really your brain saying, let's not throw a rave every single night. CBD doesn't cause tolerance because it doesn't ring the same bells. It doesn't bind to CB1 the way THC does, Instead, it modulates serotonin, TRPV1, GPR55, and increases your own anandamide levels. That's why CBD rarely causes tolerance. In fact, some users report what we call reverse tolerance, needing less over time as the system rebalances. If THC is the front man of a rock band, CBD is the sound engineer in the back, quietly keeping the mix clean. This gives you a sense for the people that like tables more than imagery. We tend to think of tolerance as failure, but often it's adaptation. Your brain builds tolerance to protect cognition, reaction time, and emotional balance. It's why people can use cannabis daily and still run businesses, raise families, and drive safely. 
This is functional tolerance. Your brain learns to normalize the experience, not because Canvas stops working, but because you stop needing the signal to feel novel. There's a reason our species can tolerate psychoactive plants. If cannabis made early humans permanently impaired, they wouldn't have made it to dinner, let alone reproduced. Tolerance is an evolutionary feature, not a bug. It's how your endocannabinoid system ensures homeostasis, function, and flexibility. So the next time someone says cannabis is damaging your brain, remind them, no, my brain is just smarter than your pharmacology professor. How many patients panic when their antidepressant stops working? Or when they need more ibuprofen to get the same relief? We don't talk about that because most meds hide tolerance under the hood. Or just don't talk about it at all. But with cannabis, it's right there in the experience. And that means cannabis isn't breaking the rules of medicine, it's revealing them. The cannabis community is making tolerance transparent and that's a gift to the entire field of pharmacology. When you hit a tolerance wall, the answer isn't just stop. You can rotate products, drop your dose, rebalance with CBD, or take strategic pauses. Think of it like physical therapy plan, not a punishment. Your ECS isn't broken, it just needs room to breathe. Resetting sensitivity doesn't require total abstinence, it requires intentionality. There's just tables, I think, that found the punchlines really easy to get. High tolerance doesn't mean you're in danger. It just means you're spending more to get less. If you're needing five times the dose for half the effect, it's not about damage. It's about diminishing returns. There's power in knowing when to scale back. Sometimes less cannabis gives you actually more control. Let's be clear, using cannabis daily isn't itself a red flag, but using it to disconnect, to escape, or when you can't stop even if you wanted to, that's when we need to talk. Tolerance isn't addiction, but sometimes it can be a relevant signal. Not of moral failure, not of damage, but of unmet needs. Your ECS is always communicating. Your job is to listen without judgment. The cannabis community isn't just learning how to use medicine better. You're teaching medicine what it missed about personalization, about pharmacology, about paying attention to the patient's actual experience. We used to treat people like passive recipients, but cannabis makes patients active investigators, tinkering, tracking, noticing. You're not just users, you are pioneers, and you're helping us all get smarter. So let's land this plane. We've redefined tolerance, not as a failure, but as feedback. We saw how it's shaped by method, biology, hormones, and formulation. We walked through the cellular science, GRKs, beta arrestins, receptor retreats. We explored evolution and learned why your ECS adapts like it does. And we framed cannabis not as a mystery, but as a mirror. This is how personalized medicine learns to grow up. This is the line I am leaving you with. Cannabis users are teaching the medical world what personalized pharmacology actually looks like. This plant isn't just therapeutic, it's educational. And the people who've walked with it the longest they're already ahead of the rest of us. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please follow, click, whatever, share what we're doing. Make sure other people hear the news.